Hello, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. And today's video sponsor, Fast Host, has allowed me to write a question for their techie test. If you live in the UK and you think you know the answer, you're in with a chance to win two tickets to South by Southwest, including flights and accommodation. Okay, so here is the question. What does VPS stand for? What does VPS stand for? stand for. Now I'll tell you more about the competition a little later in the video. Now if you want to move beyond social media just posting tweets or pictures on Instagram you're going to need some kind of website which means you're going to need some kind of web hosting. Now when you get into the whole area of web hosting there's a lot of jargon and a lot of different products that are available, different services that you can buy. And if you're just getting into this all these different terms can be quite confusing. So they want to unpack some of those terms and look at the different types of web hosting that are available if you want to get yourself a website. So if you want to find out more please let me explain. So as I said you've probably got an Instagram account or a Twitter account and if that's publicly open then people can search you, look you up, see what kind of things you're posting. But if you want to actually make a website, if you actually want to publish some consistent information in some kind of way then you're going to need some kind of web hosting. Now there are a whole range of different web hosting options available and actually when you look down the list it can be a bit mind-boggling. You go well, what is it I want? What, what do I need to pay for? What, what is... So I'm going to try to break down the different things that are available so that you can decide what you actually need. So we'll start with what's free. Free is always very good. Now if you just want to publish some information a blog it used to be called, maybe you want to write articles, you want to just publish information, then there are lots of free options available. Now I'm not particularly going to advocate one or the other, but some of the ones I use are GitHub. For example, the frequently asked questions for the speed test G is just a page on GitHub. So you can use that, you can publish a blog on GitHub and that's all free. Good for when you're doing technical stuff because GitHub is obviously associated with open source software. There are lots of platforms available like medium.com, blogger.com, wordpress.com. There are a whole bunch of them. Literally, there's a whole bunch of them that you can choose from that offer three different types of systems for blogging or for presenting articles, images, whatever you want uh, out there. And they're all free and you just sign up for them uh, and they are there. Now, of course, they all have their pros and cons in terms of advertising, in terms of support they offer, in terms of the amount of space you've got. But if you just want to get out there and start publishing something, there are free options available. Now, if you want to actually move on to having your own website where you might have, you know, your own domain, Gary Sims, .co.uk, GaryExplains.com, SpeedTestG.com, whatever, then you can have a website. Now, the simplest type of uh, web hosting is called shared hosting. What that basically means is there's a big server somewhere and there are like 500 websites running on that server and that's what it does. It shares the web server that's on that piece of hardware amongst all the different websites. And when you connect to it, uh, it you know, it's kind of just the program's running and it just handles the load, loads up your web page, displays it. If the server's busy because other websites are very popular, then there's going to be a suffering in terms of performance. You've got limitations on bandwidth, limitations on disk space because you're sharing it with lots of other people. But it's the cheapest. For just a few dollars a month, you can get yourself some professional uh, with support and so on, web hosting from so many companies out there uh, on the internet. And most of these shared hosting uh, kind of packages come with a control panel. C panel is one of the popular ones that allows you to configure things like, you know, the web pages, databases, email forwarding, uh, subdomains, you know, there's a FTP service, a whole bunch of stuff that you can configure in there. Limited because it's shared hosting, you're sharing that server with other people, but you've got some control. You can say, this is my website, my control panel, I can configure it and do whatever I want. And as I said, just a few dollars gets you into that. But if you want something more, then there are actually dedicated systems that are available just for you. You're not sharing it with other people. Now, before we get into those, it is also worth mentioning you can just get web hosting aimed at bloggers. Now, probably the most popular blogging platform is WordPress. So you can just get WordPress 
uh, hosting. So you can't do other things on the server like run your own scripts or you know run your own kind of uh, CMS system, your own content management system. You can run WordPress and they offer WordPress hosting, kind of instant install, you click it's there, you start typing in your website name and you're kind of really launched. And if WordPress offer that themselves and lots of other hosting companies offer that service on their web servers. But as I said, if you want something just for yourself, then you have to kind of go down the line of either what's called a dedicated server or a virtual private server or kind of cloud hosting. So let's look at those three. Now, a dedicated server is literally your own server. You say, I want a server, please. They say, okay, we've got here a, an AMD box or an Intel Xeon box. It's got this much memory and this much disk space. It's sitting in a rack. It's yours. You can reboot it whenever you want. You can reformat it. You can reinstall. You can back it up. You can copy it. You can do whatever you like. It's yours. Just is there. Just use it however you want. As a dedicated server. And again, the cost will be relative to how big that server is in terms of its performance, memory, its hard disks and also whether it's managed or not managed. And when by managed, it means that when you don't, if you're not a Linux system administrator and something goes wrong and you've tried rebooting and it still doesn't work as it's meant to be, you kind of go, oh no, what do I do now? I'm not a Linux expert. I'm not a system administrator. So with managed hosting, you can call the support team and they come in and they start looking at it and that's all included in the price. If you don't have managed hosting and you need to call support, they might charge you you know, per hour or something like that for them having a looking at your machine to see what the problem is. I've used dedicated servers a lot for other ventures that I've had on the internet and I still find it probably the most satisfying way to do web hosting because I know it's not my server and no one else is gonna to be touching it, no one else is gonna be using it, it's mine, that's what I do, hands off my server, this belongs to me. But of course, because it can be expensive because you've got a whole server, there is a virtual private server, which is a similar idea, but now using virtualization. So there might be one machine, one server, it's huge, and its resources are divided up so that when you have your own virtualized machine, you connect to it, it looks like you're running Linux, you can install it, you can run web servers on it, you can install email servers, you can run databases, you can run your own stuff, you can compile on it, you can do whatever you want, and it's all contained inside that virtualized private server, but there are other people using that server as well. So your server, in terms of its operating system and all that, is completely secure and separate, and again, you can say, this is mine. I reboot it whenever I want. I reformat it whenever I want. I do whatever I want. But there are other people using the same physical hardware because this is a virtual server that's split up. And that's virtualization. I haven't done a video on virtualization, actually, now I think about it. Would, would that be interesting? Let me know, because maybe I'll think about doing a video on virtualization. Now, after dedicated and virtual private servers, we get cloud servers. Now, the big difference between a cloud server is that when you have a VPS or you have a dedicated server, you pay months and you say, that's my server, physical or, or virtual. Uh, and whether you're using it or you're not using it, whether it's heavily under load or it's not hardly, no one ever goes to your website, you pay the same amount. With cloud servers, the idea is, is that you can spin up, that means kind of boot basically, a virtual server somewhere, not on one particular machine, on an infrastructure that you know, Amazon or Microsoft or DigitalOcean or whoever own, and you spin up a server, and then if you need more capacity, you can spin up a bigger one or multiple servers, and you get billed by the hour or even by the minute. So that means that when you have load, you can build up greater resources, and when you don't have that load or need, you can bring down uh, your requirements. Now, uh, that in itself is an amazing idea, but it can be quite complicated. Uh, if you look at some of the interfaces to things like Amazon Web Services or to Azure, these ways you can configure these things is just mind blowing. I mean, you really do need to understand what you're doing, but the power behind it is uh, phenomenal. So again, the thing is, is that you can spin something up very quickly, you can do something on it, you can take it down again, and you just get billed for those few minutes or those few hours that you were using it. Very different to a dedicated or virtual server, which is always on and you always pay for it the whole time. In fact, because of this whole minute 
hourly thing. There are actually cost calculators where you type in how much you think you're going to use. It tells you how much it will actually cost at the end of the day. Because what you don't want, of course, is to say, hey, I'm going to spin up 25 new email servers and 25 new databases. And like, and suddenly you get this big bill at the end. You have to kind of work out that each of these computing resources costs uh, costs money. But as I said, very powerful if you can harness that power and actually use it uh, as you need to. Fasthost is a UK web hosting company that provides web hosting products and other services. They aim to support UK businesses and UK entrepreneurs at all levels by providing effective and affordable web hosting products to suit any need. Let's face it, if you do have any kind of business or any kind of venture, you're going to need a website and I'm sure that Fasthost will be able to help you out. Fasthost offers WordPress hosting, for example. It is an ideal way to run a WordPress website on their fully optimized platform. You get instant setup, pre-installed plugins, and most importantly, auto updates. Or if you're not into WordPress, what about a dedicated server running on high performance hardware with Intel Xeon processes, lots of storage options, including the use of super fast SSDs. Very good for much more demanding projects. Now, if you're in the UK and you know the answer to this techie question, you're in with a chance to win two tickets to South by Southwest, including flights and accommodation. So the question is, what does VPS stand for? What does VPS stand for? Now, if you think you know the answer and you want to enter into the competition, go and use the link in the description below. Free to enter. If you know the answer, go and do it. Go on, you might win. Fasthost is based in the UK and it has their data center right next door to their main offices. So whether you're going for just a lightweight web hosting package or a fully fledged dedicated system, you can talk to their experts 24 seven. Okay, so that's about it. Now there are other variations and combinations to do with storage servers and backup servers and cloud servers that are in fact that are just bare metal, which means you get the whole machine, even though it's kind of configured in the way of a cloud. And I'm sure there are companies out there trying to differentiate themselves one from another by offering a whole bunch of different combinations. But that's your basic kind of spread of what's available. Free, Blogger, GitHub, whatever, okay? Shared hosting where you just get time uh, on, you get to put a website, it's on a shared server that's used by other websites. Your own server, whether it's virtual or whether it's dedicated, and then kind of cloud offerings where you can have multiple instances running and you can change those instances very much dynamically according to your needs, whether you're experimenting, whether you're rolling out new versions, whether you've got great demand, you can kind of uh, configure that. So that's your basic whole gamut and it depends on your budget and it depends on your needs. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the competition. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.